The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yeah, we discussed this bill thoroughly this morning, and uh, I think you know everybody understands uh, uh, that we have a $42 billion section of it that's wanting to help restaurants. I thoroughly support trying to get restaurants back off their uh, back uh, onto their feet. In fact, uh, it's been mentioned a number of times. We have an uh, alternative bill called the Entree Act that actually fixed the constitutional problem that existed because the bill that was that was originally uh, the structure of the Restaurant Revitalization Fund was incorrectly structured. It prioritized groups over something else and was declared unconstitutional. It was underfunded, which I told everybody by the time that the bill went, came through committee that was that, that was the case. Offered an amendment to try and fix it, was defeated. And today, here we are trying to fix the bill. I told you it wasn't structured right, it was underfunded, and we're trying to fix it. I have a bill to do that. It's paid for. This bill suddenly has no chance because it's never even been in committee yet. We can't get a hearing on it. Why? Who knows? We've, we've known it for a long time we had this problem, and suddenly last Friday this particular bill shows up, and now all of a sudden we recognize we have a problem. We've said this for a long, long time, six months or more already. Number two, we got a second part of this which hasn't been discussed very much this morning, which is for the hardest hit industries. We have $13 billion there. I can guarantee you, Madam Speaker, this isn't going to come close to fixing that problem. If you open this up to every single business that's been hard hit, we're going to wind up being back here, which is fine. But I'm just telling you right now, this is not going to fix it. Um, you know, I think one of the comments was made earlier about the economic, this bill was about economic resilience. I think our businesses are, are resilient. That's why our economy has continued to bounce back. But it's not going to be resilient if we strangle it with higher inflation, pouring more money into this, higher energy prices, more regulation. This is about freeing up the entrepreneurial spirit of our people and our small businesses that drive this country, take those burdens off, lower inflation, quit spending money we don't have, give them the support they need instead of choking them off with all of these other sorts of things. We have a bill before us that we can fix this with if we allow it to come up, but we're not doing that this morning. Instead, we have a, a bill that is poorly structured again. It's going to be, I guarantee it's not, it's not funded correctly either. We're trying to trying to find a way to claw back money, which uh, we don't even know for sure if we can. Uh, we've got some so far, but we don't have enough. So where's the relative going to come from? It's going to be printed. That's not how we should operate as a Congress. That's not what the American people expect of us. They deserve better than this. Madam Speaker, uh, let me just close by saying that enough is enough. Whenever we don't let alternatives be heard, to be able to have the voice of the minority, be able to be heard. We don't have a bipartisan atmosphere that this body should be operating under. When you have one party rule, you throw bills on the floor without going through proper order, this is what you get. Another bill that's poorly structured, that's going to be a, a, not have a chance in the Senate because nobody's worked together to find a way to solve a problem, which you all recognize exists. With that, Madam Speaker, I yield back.